Welcome back to my Unica playthrough of East Origin, where playing as Unica, I'm getting confused. Like, not in game, like, well, actually, yes, in game. Like, I physically am not getting confused, my character is. So, last episode, we uh, didn't get to a save point, and the episode was really freaking long. So, I kind of lied in what I was saying, going from checkpoint to checkpoint. But, you know, that is Unica's Burst. Once again, uh, that's what we learned at the end of la uh, yesterday's episode. That was, uh, <laughs> uh... You hit boost, and then you hit boost again, and it does a big attack. And honestly, I don't find it that useful against bosses, but it's quite good at clearing out... Uh, rooms of enemies. So, you know, it's not completely useless. And because, uh, your boost bar resets at the beginning of a boss fight anyways, why not use it to clear out enemies? Except I won't use it on, like, one enemy, because that'd be dumb. Uh, we did, uh, kind of skip a different path, but that path is not important yet. It will be important later. Uh, but we don't have the item to go down that path yet, so... There we go, using the boost again. The burst, I should say. And we're falling down here, uh, it's probably not the best idea to automatically go down here. I'm doing it anyways. There's Burst again. Look at all that SP just sitting around waiting for me to collect it. And we need to open that chest. We're gonna leave that guy there. We'll come back to him though. F you, sir. Anyways, going through demonic core, and we come here and we find a silver dress, so we can look all fancy while we're killing while we are killing demons. Can't even talk. <laughs> Now that we have our silver dress, we look all fancy. And we're confused again. Oh, I hate being confused. Uh, like I said before, confused completely changes your control scheme. So up is down, down is up, left is right, right is left. You know. It doesn't affect, uh, your attack buttons or anything, but it's really freaking annoying, and I hate it. So, yeah, not much else to say about that. Ugh, I hate it so much. So here's when I finally figure out that the spinny guys are actually more uh, affected by my flame ability than uh, the spinny move. Demonic Core, they really want you just to be uh, switching stances all the time. Okay, treasure chest is open. Not really important right now, but it's open. And, yeah. Getting as much SP as possible. And I'm cursed. Which, 
I believe reduces my stats, but not 100%. Can't go that way. At least I'm pretty sure we can't go that way. I believe down in this box is a key that we need to get through that door. Which is pretty much a cheap excuse to say, hey, kill everything in this room and then you can proceed. Why don't you just make everything glowing then, huh? You big jerk. So yeah. Not much else to say. Down here. And yes, the obsidian key has been collected. And once again, I don't know why I'm using the spinny attack now that I know that he's not really effective against it. Of course, I mostly just used my regular attacks there. My regular axe swings. And yeah. We're getting close to the end of the game. We still have a... Uh, well, we're getting close to the end of Demonic Core 1. Or I guess... Uh, I don't know how to, how to put it. Uh, that you play like half of Demonic Core, go into the next area, which is the Hall of Reflection, and then we play uh, uh, the, the second half of Demonic Core. And so technically, Demonic Core has like three bosses, I want to say. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, the Hall of Reflection is actually quite short, but it's a big maze. And so, if you don't know what you're doing, or you want to get everything that's hidden in the maze, which I will do, I will get all the hidden things, because the hidden things are quite good. Uh, one of them is a Claria Ore, and it is in fact the last Claria Ore in the game. But, uh, freaking hate Confuse. And boost! Burst! Blah! But, uh, yeah, I'll demonstrate, uh, how bad burst is against bosses. How unreliable it is against bosses. Especially the, uh, quote unquote, like, mini bosses that are, like, Epona and stuff like that. Cause, uh, spoiler alert, we're fighting Epona next! But I'm going to reduce the cost of my MP once again. I'm gonna save. Save again. Just be safe. And I thought I was gonna end the episode here, but uh, no. So I just went to the top of the stairs that are past that, and we'll go here. And we're gonna have a cutscene.
So yeah, uh, seems like uh, something pretty bad is happening. Seems like Solomon Shrine is getting hentied. Walls. But uh, yeah, here's Epona again. And she explains that, uh, well, she doesn't explain much. She just knows that Dalus is trying to pull Solomon Shrine out of the sky. She doesn't really care how, uh, how or why. She just knows that it's uh, to benefit uh, her kind, which is the Darklings. The Age of Darklings will begin. And that's all she really cares about. It benefits her. And they already caught the other goddess and the Black Pearl. It's a lot bigger than any pearl she's ever seen. Her dark, dark, dark. So yeah, time to fight Epona again. She's a lot harder this time. I mean, a lot harder. Uh, the first fight, the first part of the fight, starts out exactly the same, except a little bit different. Not pretty much the same. But, uh, Blue Lotus is going to tell us how to fight Epona for the second time. Okay. Epona is quite similar to her first fight for the first half of her health. She uses the same attacks as before, except now she dashes twice in a row. After her two dashes is the best time to attack her as she stands in place longer than normal. But once you get her to half health she calls in two clones of herself to fight alongside her. All three clones can act on their own and can be damaged to decrease her health. She won't gain any new attacks, but her attacks become harder to dodge simply because there are more on screen. Attack as much as you can without putting yourself in danger, and constantly move, and you should be able to defeat her. Thank you for that, Blue Lotus. And yeah. So, uh, as Blue Lotus stated, she's pretty much the same, except she dashes twice right there, as you saw on screen. And she's a bit of a jerk when she gets to half health. Uh, I did beat her in, in one try, though. So, it's not too bad. And, she's not too terribly hard, if you know what you're doing. So, yeah. Just waiting for her to use her dash attacks. And then... That's what I'm saying as it's uh, against people like Epona, it's kind of hard to judge when to use your burst. Because I effectively just wasted it there. And, uh. So I wouldn't suggest using burst against her. But I do a lot. And I think I only really do significant damage to her once. And I kind of corner trap her, if I remember correctly. <laughs> I recorded this two nights ago, but still. And now she summoned her, uh, her three, uh, her her two clones, and uh, she will do her uppercut move a lot more. I don't remember if I had Blue Lotus talk about the uppercut move in the, the first video uh, against Epona. But she'll have all three of them charge at you and do the uppercut move. But it's like. It's kind of. It's pretty easy to dodge if you know what you're doing. And freaking. They jump all over the place. But, yeah. There, I actually do some significant damage to her, but she still breaks out of it. Sh 
she's just a complete jerk. Complete jerk. That's all I have to say. This third floor, uh, the when she get, reaches half health is the only time you should ever have trouble with her. And I beat her. Not too terribly hard, but yeah. Still not too terribly easy. Guess you should have. And she fell over and she dropped something. We've got to hurry and get Lady Rhea free. But first we have to pick this up. Very important item. The Rod. Unica has acquired the Rod. And now I'm going to uh, end the video at the save point here. So I'll see you next time in the Halls of Reflection. And bye bye